Hey, it's Matthew here. I'm up in the gallery of guitar and today you're getting a different look at the gallery because I have switched it round so behind me is not that normal backdrop that you see at the gallery which has got all the CDs and all sorts of different posters and stuff from concerts behind me. But today actually you've got a wall of vinyl behind me which is the other side of the gallery so when I'm editing and working on putting footage together from different videos and different sessions this is what I've actually got behind me and if you take any lessons with me here at Galleria Guitar and we're working online this is what you see behind me as well so just switched it around today and today I was working a little bit earlier on in the gallery with a student and we were talking about glissandos and how they come up in lots of pieces and of course glissandos is when you slide from one note to another so you're connecting the note um, not by any tricks with the right hand or anything like that it's all to do with the left hand and it's all to do with sliding between two points of connectivity the note that you're leaving and the note that you're going towards and how do you make that work and of course there's not that much out there on glissando so I thought I'll just make a really quick really quick video today about how I sort of practice it and work up to it in a piece. And it's just a little exercise, it's really simple. It'll only take us a few minutes to go through it, but I think it'll really improve your glissando playing. So what I was doing earlier on today with the student in question was we were trying to extend the distance of our glissando and we were extending it into a new position. So we were taking the index finger, putting it on the top E string at fret one, so that's an F, and first of all, all we're doing was a really simple gliss, taking that F from 1st fret to 3rd fret. No distance at all, just covering 2 frets. And I'm re-striking with the right hand when I arrive at the 3rd fret. So playing the F, fret 1, sliding up into the 3rd fret and at the same time as arriving, plucking again with the right hand. And you can hear me sliding up the fretboard there. I'm actually, you know, the, the fingertip is rolling over the frets. And of course, then you can make that a little bit longer or a little bit larger, the distance involved. So we can take it from fret one and take it up to fret five, maybe to seven. So now the distances are getting larger. So I'm having to really time the moment at which I arrive to that new position, that new fret, and then strike with the right hand to catch the gliss at the end. We don't always catch the gliss when we play. Sometimes we might just keep sliding into it like a slur almost and keep that energy going in the hand. But for this exercise, every time I slide into a new position, I'm re-striking the note. So here we go, to three, to five, to seven. Let's keep going, let's go to nine. Let's go to 10 and let's go to 12. So I'm getting used to the different distances available to me. But remember I said before that I was working with the student on glissandoing into a new position. So I'm going to do that again, but then I'm going to connect the second and the third and the fourth finger after on the adjacent frets. So you can hear me glissing through all those frets, keeping the finger moving. What I don't want is that the momentum I'm carrying forward sort of peters out and we're ending up with something which is dying away and you can hear the metal bars of the frets really affecting the sound. So you keep the motion moving into that new position and into that new note. So I'm just doing three to five to seven and this time I think I'm going to go to nine then ten and then twelve and then I'm going to do that on the B string Now 
the moment I'm really monitoring what I'm doing, I'm watching as I, as I slide up and down the neck of the guitar. I'm not really watching the finger so much because that doesn't help me. Imagine if you were running out for a jog or something like that and you were watching your feet all the time. Well, you would probably stumble or you'd probably run into something that's in front of you. So you don't really watch the finger as it moves. You watch where the finger's going. You watch the place the finger's going to move into, that new position. So when I'm going, say, from fret 1 to 7, I'm looking at 7. Then I'm looking at 9. Then 10. And then 12. Till I get there. You can do this on the bass strings as well. Sando happening on the bass strings as well. When you're doing it on the bass strings, if you try and turn the fingertip just to the side when you gliss, you'll get a quieter noise as you slide up the string. You won't get as much string noise and you won't get as much squeak or as much lift off noise. Um, you've got to be really careful with the glissando. It's a great tool and it's a really expressive tool. But often on guitar, it can stick out like a, a sore thumb, really. It can just sort of appear and disappear as if it was its own little island and it's not about connecting a melody or or keeping something going in a really legato fashion so it's something that we have to practice so it's a really simple exercise Try it yourself, just have a little bit of fun with it. Put it into your practice routine or your warm up or your technical exercises that you do. Just have a little bit of fun with it. Um, you can then make it a little bit more complex. Maybe this is for a more extended video another time. But you can gliss to the second finger or to the third finger or to the fourth finger. So instead of glissing to one, you can move into the position and gliss to the two or to the three or to the four. So again, you're making it even wider. You're making that distance longer and you're starting to have a look at exiting the gliss. So the movement's still made by one, but exiting to a new finger because your melody might require you to move after glissandoing with one finger to another. So that's just at the end of the gliss, transitioning over to the next finger. We might cover this in another lesson, but tonight, just because I've been working on it with a student earlier in the day, I thought, Let's put this up and share it all with you because we, we invented the exercise right there in the lesson. If you think of our great 19th century masters on guitar, Fernando Sor, Giuliani, Carcassi, Aguado, Carulli, all these great composers that wrote for our instrument, they often were making up studies and etudes every week for new students. I provoke you to do the same thing in your own studying. When you come up against a little bit that's something difficult in a piece, you don't have to write a whole study or a whole etude, but you can write a little exercise or you can develop a little practice plan around that difficult area in the piece. Your own little quirky exercises that help you deal with some of the technical challenges that you find in your repertoire. That's what I was doing earlier on today with a student and I thought I would share it with you now. See you soon. <laughs>